On the news, former HGF testifies against former CBN Governor Emifiele, says Buhari's signature forged to withdraw $6.2 billion. Federal government says National Commodity Board underway to combat rising food inflation. And Senate President swears in three newly elected senators. Many thanks for joining us on News Now on TV 360 Nigeria. I'm Tamlore Akinkolie. Now, former Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has told the Federal High Court in Abuja that he believes a signature and that of former President Muhammad Buhari were forged to facilitate the withdrawal of $6.2 billion from the Central Bank. Mustafa gave the testimony at the ongoing trial of former Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele. Emefiele faces 21 amended counts, including criminal breach of trust, corrupt benefits, conspiracy, forgery, and acquiring money on the false pretense totally $6,230,000. He is accused of impersonating the former secretary to the government to illegally obtain the funds. Now, appearing as prosecution witness too, Mr. Fa said he was unaware of the transaction during his tenure, which ended in May 2023. He asserted that the document used to obtain the funds did not originate from the office of the former president, Mahmoud Buhari, whom they served under for five years and seven months. Mustafa also highlighted discrepancies in the letter allegedly from President Buhari, refuting the signature's authenticity and disputing the formal tone used. He contended that the Federal Executive Council decisions are not conveyed via letters. Now, a former branch controller of the CBN at the Monday told the court that the money was paid to his staff in the office of the former secretary to the government of the Federation for foreign election observers and that he acted on the authority of the former director of banking services of the APAS Bank. The federal government has announced plans to establish a national commodity board to address the escalating food inflation in Nigeria. Vice President Keshim Shachima disclosed this during a high-level strategic meeting on climate change, food system and resource mobilization held in Abuja. The board will be tasked with assessing and regulating food prices as well as maintaining a strategic food reserve to stabilize prices of essential grains and food items. Speaking at the event, Vice President Shetima emphasized Nigeria's commitment to mitigating the effect of climate change and ensuring food security for its citizens. The Vice President also outlined short-term strategies to revitalize food supply, including the establishment of the National Commodity Board and collaboration between the Ministries of Agriculture and Water Resources for efficient farmland irrigation. And three senators elect have been formally sworn in as senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, marking their official entry into the country's upper legislative chamber. Senate President Gosul Akwabio proceeded over the swearing in ceremony. The newly sworn in senators are Antonio Corrie of the All Progressives Congress, representing Eboyin South, Mustafa Musa, also of APC, representing Yobe East, and Prince Pam from the Action Democratic Party, ADP, representing Plateau North. The oath of office was administered by the Clerk of the Senate, Shinedu Akuboise, in accordance with Param paramilitary protocols. Following the swearing-in ceremony, the newly inducted lawmakers were escorted to their designated seats within the Senate chambers, where they would now commence their legislative duties representing their respective constituencies. That as a member of the Senate, I will perform my functions honestly to the best of my ability, faithfully in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the law and the rules of the Senate and always in the interest of the sovereignty. Integrity, 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 solidarity, solidarity well-being, well and prosperity of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. 
Still on Tuesday, plenary session at the Senate, Senate President Goswell Akwabio has expressed gratitude to the service chiefs and ministers who entered the Senate summon to brief senators of the state of security in the country. It says the need for adequate financial resources to procure equipment and address security challenges effectively partly informed the decision of the Senate to invite the service chiefs. Akwabi also explained that the decision to include ministers in the session stemmed from petition received from, from constituents with the Senate utilizing its oversight function through the Committee for the O to address pertinent issues. The Senate decided to take this option for us to have this interaction because of the various petitions that we have received from our constituents. And as part of our major oversight function, we decided to do this through Committee of the Whole. And, then, and so it's because of the need for us to hear directly from you. And then from there, we can also brief the people. If there is any need for uh, any cause for alarm, if there is no cause for alarm, we we'll also know. And if there is anything you want the National Assembly, the Senate to do, we we'll do so working closely with our partners in the House of Representatives. So we welcome you. And nurses from the National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives in Lagos have protested against the newly introduced verification certification guidelines by the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria. The NMCN circular released on February 7 imposed a requirement for nurses to have a minimum of two years of post-qualification experience before obtaining a verification certificate to practice abroad. During the peaceful protest, the nurses expressed dissatisfaction, claiming the rules in their career opportunities and demanding a reversal of the regulation. We actually want the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria to withdraw the circular within 48 hours because this is not benefiting the old nurses. If we look into the present situation of the country, uh, of the country at recent, it's not conducive for any nurse. But irrespective of the condition, we are just making this a, a peaceful protest, very, very peaceful. So if for eventual, there is no action after this, we hereby want to let you know that we will be going on national strike. Yes. Irrespective of whatsoever the condition might have been, let them go and nurse their patient by themselves. Yes. We are not slaves. We challenge federal government that when last did they recruit nurses, verification or nurses relocating is not an issue. Yes. The issue is on the employment of nurses in Nigeria. Yes. Yes. We have thousands of nurses that are unemployed. Yes. You are not employing them and you don't want them to go and get employment where they want it. What do you want them to do? We are calling on the NMCA registrar, nurse Umar Farouk Abubakar, yes. Yes. to reverse the new verification guideline. Yes. Instead, Nurse Farouk should work towards proper placement yes. for nurses in the federal health system. Now joining me to give more insight into the protest is Nurse Oluashogo Esther, a registered and practicing nurse in Lagos State. Thank you for joining us. Now as a practicing nurse, what do you find wrong with the new requirement imposed by the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria? So as a practicing nurse, are you with me? Yes, I'm with you. Go on. Okay. Good evening. My name is Nazolua Shogo. So I'll be talking about this um, um, new verification project made by the NMCN. As a registered nurse passing in, in Lagos State, spending two years post-qualification is not necessary. When we were on training in school then, we were told we were on posting after our training, we'll go to the hospital for training. While we are in the hospital, we have some preceptors that are also guiding us, making sure we are doing the right thing, 
making sure we are practicing the right thing, which is also practiced in other countries, such as UK, Canada, and USA. While we are there, we are being trained properly to know the rules and regulations, to know the normal nursing ethics while we are practicing. So why the government, uh, the NMCN government should not impose on us to stay in Nigeria after after getting our, our license to, co to continue working there for a year for like two years? This is not necessary. In a condition where the government are the one maybe for paying for our qualification as a registered nurse, maybe they are the one paying or they are making um, a subsidy, our, our education, a subsidy, a subsidized payment. Then the government can make a rule that, okay, after two years, if we have trained you properly, after two years, you can relocate. You can do anything you want because you are entitled to, because they had one that paid for your education. They are the one that paid for everything you needed throughout that period of, of time you have been educated on this course then you are entitled to stay for two years. But in a condition where your sponsor, social like your guidance or your parents are the one giving you, providing, sponsoring you throughout the education, they do not need to impose a post two year um, qualif uh, uh, qualification while you are staying in Nigeria. Most of us, while our parents are training us, they already told us, okay, my, my daughter or my sponsor or my guardian, once you are done with this training, you will be you will try to relocate to other countries to also sponsor your education or to also practice as a nurse. That is why most of us are going to other countries to like practice there. Then any um, knowledge or any any skill that you gain, because I spoke to some of my colleagues as a nurse. Okay, you want to travel out of this country. What is the benefit to you? What is the benefit to this country? Some of them tell us that if they go there to like go and work, they are still coming back to this country to come and make sure this our healthcare system is much more better than this. No, because all right, you are not sorry for cutting you short, no, Sister. They explore, they want to explore to know all these kind of things. They are not able to do it anymore. All right, no, Some Sister, sorry for cutting you short, but due to time... Now, but due to time, how do you think these regulations will affect the ability of Nigerian nurses to pursue opportunities for professional development and advancement abroad? This we have this will surely affect most of the Nigerian nurses, especially we youth nurses. We like call us Gen Z nurses or do you understand? It really affects us psychologically, it can affect us emotionally. Some will not even put zeal into this work anymore because at the end of the day, they say we are not allowed to go and pursue our dream again. This will be actually detrimental to some people because I have some of my peers that have written some of their exams, and now hearing this kind of news is really detrimental to them and it's making them to reduce the zeal to even add more what, what they have learned before to the country. Because to some extent, this economic is not conducive for us as young nurses to really do well. Even concerning the payments, concerning the environment, there are some equipment that is needed in some facilities. They don't have it. Mm. We can't do more than what is being provided. Mm -hmm. If you move to other countries and there's more equipment, you can practice more, you can explore more. Mm -hmm. But right now, if there's any um, deprivation from their tribunals, it's really reduced their system. Zeal to even practice as a nurse in Nigeria. All right, nurse Oluwa Shogo Esther, thank you for speaking with us. Now, moving on, the National Assembly has held the inaugural legislative summit of renewable energy as a pivotal platform for laying down a robust legal framework to advance the utilization of renewable energy and establish proper regulations from the sector in Nigeria. Senate President Senator Goswil Akwabio and Speaker of the House of Representatives Abbas Dajidin expressed confidence in the summons potential impact during their remarks at the event organized by the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies in collaboration with the Solar Energy Limited. Representing the Senate President, Senator Agon Jarige, Chairman of the Senate Committee on Gas, emphasized the transformative potential of the summit in revolutionizing Nigeria's power and renewable energy landscape. With the presence of other industrial stakeholders that like the private sector here today, carve an opportunity of collating and enlightening practitioner perspective 
in effective and efficient deployment of policy towards achieving national development. This is particularly important because our laws must be seen to be working for providers and consumers of electricity. The mandate of National Assembly does not end with lawmaking. It continues with activity like legislative oversight, post legislative scrutiny, and public or investigative hearing to continually assess the functionality of law parties. Renewable energy is not just a passing trend or an optional part. It is the future and it holds the key to sustainable development, economic growth, and a cleaner, healthier planet. By fully exploiting the legal and institutional framework, we can increase access to energy for all Nigerian citizens and industries. Renewable energy sources. Even the more advanced societies that have electricity 247 are turning to renewables, such as solar, wind, biomass, hydro, geothermal, wave and tidal energy. So we in these parts that have some of these sources of renewable energy, how well are we doing to harness them? We'll go on a short break now, but still to come, President Tinubu hosts Super Eagles after AFCON confers national honors and players. Details of the story right after this break. Welcome back. Now a quick recap of our top stories. Former Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has told the Federal High Court in Abuja that he believes the signature and that of former President Muhammad Ibrahim were forged to facilitate the withdrawal of $6.2 billion from the Central Bank. Appearing as a prosecution witness too, Mustafa said he was unaware of the transaction during his tenure, which ended in May 2023. He says the document used to withdraw the funds from the central bank did not originate from the office of former President Muhammad Buhari, whom they served under for five years and seven months. This is already that the federal government has announced plans to establish a national commodity board to address the escalating food inflation in Nigeria. The board will be tagged with assessing and regulating food prices as well as maintaining a strategic food reserve to stabilize prices of essential grains and food items. Now, in case you miss any of the news bulletin or for more updates, you can catch us on Lyman's World TV or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at tv360nigeria or download our mobile app on Google Play Store and the Huawei App Gallery and Apple Store on Facebook or at TV360 online. Let's now join Simi Soladigun for updates in the world of business. Simi, over to you. Thank you very much, Tamilari. Welcome to Business News. In a bid to bolster trade relations between Nigeria and the United Kingdom, the federal government is poised to sign an enhanced trade and investment partnership agreement with the British government. Minister of Trade and Investment Doris Inkeroka Uzoka Anite disclosed that the agreement is set to yield substantial economic gains for Nigeria, fostering increased trade between the two nations. Her remarks came during a reception honoring the UK Minister of Business 
Business and Trade, Kemi Badnoch, who embarked on a three-day visit to Nigeria. Uzo Kahanite emphasized that the forthcoming agreement to be signed in Abuja aligns closely with President Bola Tinubu's eight-point agenda aimed at stimulating trade and investment opportunities across borders and fostering an enabling environment for businesses to thrive. We know what um, having a trade agreement or investment agreement means. It means that more money will flow into Nigeria. Everybody say yeah to that. <laughs> And hopefully we'll see more trade happen between the two countries. We have been doing a lot of trade in the past, but now it's about to go on nitro. So now we're going to make UK, and the UK is going to make us a more favored partner in trading and investment. And I hope this is going to be your first choice of destination. Uh, an agreement between the two countries that looks at how we can cooperate in areas such as financial services, legal services, and ensuring that we are creating the right uh, business and investment environment between the two countries, looking at how perhaps we can reduce market access barriers or regulatory barriers that are discussed encouraging people from either investing in Nigeria or vice versa, what we can do in order to create mutual benefit in the economies of both countries. Well, yes, so uh, one of the things that I've been discussing today is the difficulties uh, operating businesses in Nigeria. There are global economic challenges uh, which every country is facing. Almost every country on the planet is dealing with very high inflation or inflation that's much higher than what they're used to. And these are the sorts of things which will discourage um, investment. But there will be country-specific uh, issues as well. I'll take a short break. A review of the stock market is up next. Well, despite a positive start to the week, trading on the local balls went south on Tuesday, decreasing by 0.33%. The market breadth also closed negative with 23 gainers against 30 losers. PZ Consensus Nigeria leads the League of Laggards with a end-of-day price depreciation of 9.87%, followed by Morrison Industries. Tuesday's trading had a total of 263 million volumes of shares exchanged in 8,614 deals valued at over 4 billion naira. It's a similar tale for our select foreign stocks with the UK's FTSE and US Dow Jones maintaining maintaining a southward trend leaving Japan's Nikkei in bulls territory. Well, that's all on business and stock market report. Tammy has the rest of the news. Thank you, Sabisola. Now on foreign scene, South Africa's government decided that it has asked the World Court to consider whether Israel's decision to extend its military operations in Rafa required the court to use its power to prevent further breach of Palestinian rights. The International Court of Justice, ICJ, last month ordered Israel to take all measures within its power to prevent its troops from committing genocide against Palestinians in Gaza in the case brought by South Africa. Now, Israel is planning to expand this ground assault into the city of Rafa, where over one million Palestinians have sought refuge from the offensive that has laid waste to much of the Gaza Strip since a mass militant attacked Israel on October the 7th. And finally, on sports, following their performance at the recently concluded AFCON 2023 tournament in Ivory Coast, President Bola Tinubu has conferred the national honor of member of the Order of the Niger on members of the team at, in Abuja. Along with the national honor, each player was gifted a plot of land at the Federal Capital Territory. Our correspondent, Sidney Okafo, completes the story. The highly anticipated 34th African Cup of Nations ended dramatically on Sunday when the Super Eagles lost the trophy to the host country, Africa Coast, by 2-1, notwithstanding the outcome at the final. President Bola Tinubu hosted the nation's national football team, the Super Eagles, on Tuesday morning as a show of solidarity. The entire team and officials were present, including Alessi Wobi, who has been a victim of cyberbullying from Nigerian fans who believe the player did not give his best in the final match. Competitive football is unpredictable. But we were determined. We salute your resilience. 
you lifted our spirit. You made us proud. You made us smile. The national team received commendation for their resilience during the tournament. That the entire team remains very grateful for all the support it received from you. For the first time in almost forever years, we've gone for a major competition. We've come back without any crisis, without any complaint, without any issues whatsoever. Your unity and determination on the field have made us all proud and inspired us to emulate this off the field. While you may have finished in second place, your efforts have not gone unnoticed. We remain immensely proud of each and every one of you and we are confident that greater victories lie ahead. The president bestowed upon each player the title of member of the Order of the Niger MON as a symbol of their effort to spot development in the country. We are ready. I think now we, we just finished a tournament that, that is uh, one of the most hardest uh, we have uh, played in since I, since I started my career. And now we have to go back to our club to keep up the good work and hopefully we get called up by, by, our, by our national team and give our all also. And of course the goal is to, to get a ticket to the World Cup and I think uh, we have the team and we have the squad to, to achieve that. Because, uh, because literally the way um, the Mr. President said, he said we really try our best. So, but it's up to him like um, to show this um, appreciation to us. But I really appreciate him so well. I really appreciate him so much. Like um, to be really honest, uh, he really tried for us. To be really, he showed that we 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 worked in um, Africa. So I appreciate it. Ahead of the World Cup qualifiers, the team's member urged the supporters to desist from cyberbullying, vowing to give it their all. Sydney Okafor, TV360, Lagos. And I wrap up all Latino news. Now many thanks for watching.